September 17th. Uh, just before we have the adoption of the agenda, I would like to note that there was an error in the agenda with regard to staff report P2018-30, proposed Park Bridge head office, 70 here on street, to confirm tonight we're only dealing with the official plan amendment um, being considered. So that helps everybody or anybody with uh, any information or questions. We are only here for the OPA tonight. That being said, can I get a mover and seconder for the adoption of the agenda moved by Councillor Jeffrey, second by Deputy Mayor Saunderson. All those in favor? Passed. Declarations of pecuniary interest. Seeing none, I'll move on. Business arising from the previous meeting. Seeing none, I'll move on. <coughs> Deputations. 5.1 Planning Application Re 70 Huron Street. Mr. Andrew Pascuzzo, on behalf of the Park Ridge Lifestyle Communities, Inc. Mr. Pascuzzo will uh, present to the committee. Once he is done, then we'll go to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name, welcome. I just a reminder, a, a nice reminder. You have 10 minutes, but if you do go over a little bit. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You. I'll, I will pass that on to my colleagues. Uh, I'm not going to do much speaking here. My name is Andrew Pascuzzo. I'm a registered professional planner with uh, Pascuzzo Planning, Inc. here tonight on behalf of Park Ridge Lifestyles, Inc., uh, who own the property at 70 here on Street. Um, with me tonight is uh, Sandy, Rob, and uh, um, Ken. Ken here tonight uh, on behalf of Park Ridge, and I'm going to turn uh, the presentation over to Rob. He, he has uh, some discussion items. Um, there is a presentation on, on Park Ridge itself, and they are, and then obviously there is some discussion on the official plan amendment that the staff report talks about too. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'll turn it over. Thank you. Mr. Higgins, welcome. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to bring this uh, before you tonight. Uh, you probably will recall uh, we were here a few months ago uh, on the rezoning of the property to accommodate our new head office. So um, I'm just going to start just uh, going over again who is Park Ridge. So, at the moment, uh, we own uh, almost 120 residential and recreational properties across the country with uh, just under 28,000 operational sites. We are Canada's largest owner operator developer of land lease uh, communities and resort properties in Canada. And uh, just on the residential side, we have a uh, little over 20,000 uh, residents making us basically a small size city spread across the country in a number of uh, different jurisdictions. What we're looking to do here, uh, we have been uh, headquartered in Calgary for the last 20 years, but have had a large satellite operation in Wasaga Beach, actually a much larger operation than our head office in Calgary. But we're looking to consolidate all of our operations into a new head office in Collingwood at 70 Euron Street and uh, that will combine uh, all of our uh, management and administrative functions in this new building. Uh, so when we open this new headquarters uh, we will be bringing something in the range of 130 to 150 uh, very good jobs into the community and uh, nature of our business uh, we're primarily an operating company but uh, we do expand uh, and uh, create new land lease communities so we're a growing company uh, we've been at this now for 20 years owned by um, the british columbia investment management company for the last seven years and uh, we take a lot of pride in what we're doing uh, and uh, look forward to a long-standing relationship with the community. I'm going to turn it now over to Rob Voigt to go through the details. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Voigt. I'm going to try to run through this as quick as I can. Um, again, our 
proposal for consideration is for the amendments to the official plan, uh, again, in preparation for the zoning and site plan application. Uh, just a, an air photo there of the site. You'll notice there's uh, the, uh, the red outline is uh, the area that we're talking about. Um, we chose the site because of a, you know, an extensive sort of internal process in terms of our business site selection, uh, but also the broad-based community considerations for the site specifically. Uh, I know the uh, staff has um, taken uh, good efforts to document that also in the staff report that is before you, uh, but essentially it does allow us to have a kind of an optimal uh, location in terms of the, the business that we run and its um, uh, situation uh, in relationship to the downtown core. Uh, so it's within walking uh, proximity to downtown. The size of the site does support our approximately 30,000 square foot uh, office space requirement, which is, um, you may have heard the number 40,000 earlier on, but from what we've heard, um, not only from uh, the citizens, but uh, also from our internal analysis on designing this, uh, we've been able to um, sort of uh, find efficiencies internally, and so that has also um, <coughs> shrunk the actual uh, square footage that we need. And it's, of course, it's a high visibility, uh, great site location that easily supports active transportation. Community benefits, uh, for those that are, are uh, here or watching, um, you know, this is a former landfill, so we are able to clean up a landfill site that has been dormant for decades. Uh, as uh, Sandy had mentioned, um, you know, this is, uh, again, a change of use, which does bring municipal tax revenue uh, that uh, hasn't generated uh, tax revenue from that site before. Um, and then again, the, uh, the job base that this increases for the community. Uh, we've held uh, not only the statutory required public meeting uh, in, in the chambers here, but we've also had um, two uh, informal public meetings and numerous in-person meetings with some of the neighbors on site-specific issues that, uh, that they've brought up to our attention. I'm just gonna run through some facts really quickly on this. Um, you know, the land use designation, uh, in terms of uh, where it stands prior to assuming there is uh, approval of this OPA and the uh, zoning uh, change, it would allow for up to 71 apartment style units in the parking facilities, uh, which the zoning that would go along with that would allow uh, up to 16 meters in height. Uh, we are now uh, gonna be proposing uh, 12 meters for their zoning when we get to that point. So significantly lower than what you could do um, if we were to uh, develop it for residential. Uh, the recreational zoning was attended uh, to ensure that the site remediation was required, uh, essentially. And as I mentioned, um, there was uh, it's an existing or former landfill, uh, and we have a budget of a million dollars to clean that up. So it's quite a costly uh, exercise, and procedurally there's all kinds of um, specific engineering that's required for that. Stormwater management, um, all the stormwater, all the water that lands on our site will remain on our site as is with any development. So in fact, we are able to uh, address the issues of stormwater um, challenges that are already existing in the neighborhood and improve them. And we've had some discussions with our engineers and town engineers uh, to potentially, since you know, hopefully we will be building there, to find some opportunity to work together to solve some of the, the town's problems in terms of stormwater management for the neighbors. Uh, again, with us being there and being able to mobilize at the same time, there might be some cost savings all around but we can solve a problem that would be far more difficult in the future. Uh, the uses proposed, office uses, full stop, uh, pretty simple. Uh, of course, accessory uses that go with that, you know, storage and all that, but it is an office use. And the billing height, we heard uh, loud and clear uh, what the uh, citizens were saying. Um, 17 meters was too high. Uh, through our internal uh, building uh, design and uh, layout, uh, and, um, and kind of trying to push the limits of that and being efficient, we've been able to bring the building down, as proposed, down to 12 meters, which is uh, essentially what would be allowed in, in the zoning without any kind of exceptions. Vehicular access has always been pro uh, proposed to be from Huron Street, would require a turning lane um, uh, on Huron Street in terms of the improvements that's been kind of standard. Um, we've been asked to look at uh, providing pedestrian crossing on Huron Street somewhere. Uh, again, that's kind of outside of the scope of our project, but we have instructed our engineers to see how that might work when we get to the time of designing um, th that change to the uh, cross-section of uh, here Ontario. We see there's value to the community, but also then for uh, our workers there that may uh, wish to uh, cross the road uh, near, the, uh, near the head office site. Uh, there's no through traffic between Huron and Simcoe Streets. This has been made 
uh, very clear by us from the beginning. Uh, we will have a secondary access that does provide for emergency access, and there's also helps us in terms of um, uh, pedestrian and uh, um, other forms of active transportation access, and quite frankly, uh, is also an issue for us in terms of um, the management and insurance for our building to have more than one access to it. Um, Simcoe Street access, again, will be think of something that's more of a laneway than a road. It is just the drive uh, that will, as, a, uh, as I just characterized it. Landscape screening, um, although we're nowhere near the design of that yet, we have, uh, are more than happy to um, uh, provide additional screening, including uh, screening fence uh, and some berming uh, around the edges uh, where we might uh, have some uh, ability to provide some visual obstruction of our site to the neighbors. Noting again that we have uh, very few direct neighbors because there's that kind of L-shaped piece of land uh, that is to the east and south. Uh, and um, uh, so with that, there's also so that uh, additional um, kind of setbacks, if you will, in screening. Uh, lighting, uh, anything that's dealing uh, with that will be addressed uh, in site plan, as most of these things are, in fact. Uh, and we will uh, uh, comply with the, the town's dark sky compliance requirements in terms of uh, lighting. Today's meeting, again, is an official plan amendment. We hoped uh, to also be uh, doing the, the zoning. Um, the zoning would be, uh, we hope that uh, council can bring that, uh, this committee can bring that uh, forth at the, at the next meeting. Uh, staff uh, refers to the idea of um, sort of dealing with site plan and zoning at the same time. Uh, that, uh, quite frankly, all the road issues that are at a site plan level um, will be and uh, appropriately and can be dealt with at site plan. Linking the two um, doesn't mean that there's anything that would happen at zoning that then wouldn't be dealt with. There is no kind of go around on that. All that does, quite frankly, is um, delay the project uh, and cause some, some additional challenges uh, for us in terms of uh, timing and the viability uh, of this project moving forward in a timely manner. Um, but again, today is just the OP update so that we can make that first step. Uh, and uh, note that there is still the ongoing application um, uh, relating to site remediation, uh, and that goes through the NVCA, so we're dealing with that. Um, all the issues we've heard to date are essentially of a design nature and relate to things that would be required of us at site plan, uh, particularly uh, um, detailed engineering in terms of functionality of the site. I think I'm just around my 10 minute mark. Uh, we are available for uh, answering any questions, and I thank you. Time. Thank you very much, Mr. Boyd, Mr. Higgins, and Mr. Pascuzo. We appreciate you guys being here this evening. Before we, uh, the committee looks at this, are there any questions or comments from the public? Uh, you will have five minutes to address the committee, and please try not to repeat something that somebody else has already asked. So all I ask you to do is to put your hands up and come up, introduce yourself, and. Uh, Good evening, um, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, members of council, and the public. Thank you for providing us with an opportunity to speak to the planning applications on the Park Bridge proposal, substantially large office building, proposed to be located at 70 Huron Street. I am Marie LaRue. I am a registered professional planner, but I am not here tonight as a planner, but as a resident of Collingwood. My husband, Rick Barrett, and I live at 551 Simcoe Street. It's Simcoe Street that this development proposes to have its emergency access onto. My husband and I are objecting to the official plan and the zoning amendment applications and to permit the proposed large corporate office for Park Bridge to be located on the subject lands at 70 Heron Street. I'm sorry that I did not make our submission and objection at the public meeting but we were not aware of the magnitude of this development until after the public meeting. We will submit to council our submission objecting to these applications for this proposal prior to September 24th council meeting. So long as we have made our concerns known to council before they make their decision, we will maintain our rights of appeal to of the decision of council if we so wish. We respectfully request this committee to recommend to Council 
that the official plan amendment and the zoning application be refused. The amendment to permit the proposed corporate office on these lands at 70 Huron Street do not comply with the Town of Collingwood's official plan. It is not good planning to permit such a large corporate office in the middle of a residential area. This proposal is incompatible with the surrounding uses. It will create additional traffic issues on Huron and Zippo Street. It is not a downtown commercial core use, and it is not adjacent to or an expansion of the downtown core area. We will elaborate on all these points in our submission to Council. The subject lands have been appropriately planned and designated in the official plan for medium density residential. The town just recently updated their Schedule C in 2014, the residential density plan. That shows the lands to accommodate the various densities of residential growth to 2031. This was needed to uh, comply with the provincial density targets and also to ensure that a minimum of 40% of the residential growth is within the town's identified built boundary. The highest and best use for these lands would be residential and medium residential. Park Bridge could develop one of their residential life lease communities here. It's a good location for medium development and it meets the criteria in the official plan policy for it to be located there. It's close proximity to the town services, the amenities, including parks, schools, trails, public transit right there, commercial uses, and all within walking distance. The town is in need of more affordable housing, and this property is a prime location to have high residential, develop, development, residential development that could be compatible with the surrounding uses. There would be several people who would love to live in this area, so close to all these amenities this town has to offer, the waterfront, the trails, the beautiful sunset point. I mean, it's worth millions to be in that area. Business offices and corporate administration offices are permitted in commercial and industrial designations. The corporate administration offices are permitted in business and industrial park designation areas. The town has planned for all of this. The mixed use commercial, highway commercial, light industrial, business park industrial, and industrial park zones all permit businesses office and building heights to 15 meters. The town has done extensive planning and commercial policy review report completed in 2004 to provide planning options and give clear direction for how and where future commercial should be developed in town. The official plan has been updated and provides clear policy to help council make decisions on commercial proposals and to assist those wanting to develop in our town to know where and how these permitted are permitted. The various commercials have been done to specifically keep this town so beautiful and operating the way the town should be. The policies were established to protect the downtown core Establish where regional commercial centers with large retail shopping centers would be okay to meet the people's needs and provide opportunities by banking large parcels of land where new commercial and industrial businesses could be established in town with no issues, no opposition from surrounding uses. There's ample land for this office to go to already designated and permitted. Please ask yourself, in Park Bridge, why are they not locating where the proposed office would be permitted? Where the height is permitted to be 15 meters? And they could probably just get a minor variance to increase it to 17 meters and build the head office here in Collingwood that they want to build. Why, why restrict them to three floors and fit, trying to squeeze people in? Why, are, why aren't they building where they can and it's permitted now? Yes, we want Park Bridge to build their head office in Collingwood, but where it's appropriate and where lands the towns have planned to permit them. Council have been elected to represent the people of this town. Here tonight are a whole lot of people in opposition to this development at this location. Please refuse the applications. 
I have reviewed the official plan amendment number four that's attached to the planning report. It does not, under the actual amendment, read as the applications have been amended. It states, it states permitted uses to be limited to business offices and accessory uses. According to the planning report, the applications were amended and as presented tonight, what's proposed is one maximum three-story office building with a maximum height of 12 meters. If you want, and if you're going to approve it, you should direct your planning staff to make that change in, before it goes to council for consideration on September 24th, because if it's not in there, then it may not be implemented. We respectfully request that you recommend council refuse these application. This was planned for residential, not commercial. Council should stick to the plan that was created to keep this town as beautiful as it is. There are so many that want to come and live here. Let's try to keep it as beautiful and as planned as well as it has so far. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well spoken, well done. But just for point of clarity, I let that one go to just about eight minutes. So please, for the, everybody else coming up, there was a lot of stuff that was brought up there. Try to keep it as close to five. Do we, anybody else that would like to get up and speak or ask questions in regards to the OPA? Mr. Coulter, welcome. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Um, my concern for this res, uh, commercial building they want in a residential area is they want to com change it to commercial, but all of a sudden they want this roadway that runs through onto Simcoe and that into a residential area. I just don't understand if they want a commercial, how you're going to have a commercial roadway coming into a residential area. That's my biggest concern. Thank you. Anyone else? Please come up and introduce yourself. My name is Barbara Connor Black and I live on Simcoe Street and my concern is with the proposed left-hand turn lane. I don't think the street is wide enough for a left-hand turn lane and you'd have to widen the road, but it's my understanding that wetlands are to the north of the road. Therefore, how can you put in a left-hand turn lane if there's not enough road space? You could take that into consideration, please. Thank you very much. Anyone else who would like to speak? Mr. Pretty, come up. Good evening. Try and keep this more calm. Uh, Matt Pretty, Matthew uh, Pretty, uh, town of Colin resident. I walk the town a lot. I walked to Blue Mountain this weekend, doing a little garbage cleanup and bottle pickup, and it was really nice, 20 kilometers. I agree with, uh, you know, a lot of the residents talking about speed of traffic and commercial and residential, and, you know, the tourism speaks very loudly. I watched the Cyclotron race today, and I looked at all these potholes at the corner of 19 and Mountain Road, and how narrow Mountain Road is, and, and I just don't think we're doing enough. We need to expand. When roads are needed for commercial and residential, we got to go the distance, not just 25 feet after an intersection. We got to look at the whole length of the road. So for example, this area at 70 Huron is an interesting property. And I thought originally the plan was to make a residential complex next to the Simcoe County housing at the end of Napier Street. I was like, oh, cool, there's an interesting property development. Nevertheless, who the owner or the, the developer would be, I was like, oh, this is fantastic. There is a perfect area for a high density or medium density development 
that is an effect of uh, you know housing and the, and the call for uh, you know for residential. Um, I, I do see two issues. Well, I see three issues here. Is is uh, you know the the in and out of a property can be dangerous. I can see First Street, the in and out of some of those areas. I just wish there was a light at Birch Street, but. That shoppers Mr. drug Pretty. is awful. Yes. We're just here to talk about the official plan amendment for 70 Huron. Could I ask the developer to comment if they would consider the guy that's a lot to ask them to switch their plan, but would they consider doing a residential? And could there be well as long as you talk about 70 Huron, you have a minute left to say whatever all right. you would well, like. Well police services says they don't want a light at Niagara Street. I was speaking with an officer on the phone. She says no, it doesn't need a light, it can't have a light, so that's unfortunate. Could we ask the developer to calmly answer the potential? Would this not be more profitable and, and cohesive with the neighborhood? Would they be able to comment regarding a maybe a development opportunity as the residents are asking to create a residential. May I, may I put that forward? I believe you just did and you are 15 seconds and I'm sure that okay, they will I'll take that in here. and uh, get back to you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else this evening that would like to get up and ask a question in regards to 70 Huron and the official plan amendment? Call one more time. Please introduce yourself, sir. Nice to see you. I'm Howard Hyman, a resident of Collingwood since 2004. I live on Market Street, right in the downtown core. And uh, this is of concern to me because it's, I've come to love Collingwood. I just see so much wrong with this development. I mean, I heard the man say that they're not next to a residential area directly. Well, if 10 or 15 feet is not directly, okay, yes. <laughs> it's technically right. But it is right in the midst of a residential area. And I can't see this going ahead unless all the property on the block is bought and then rezone the whole thing. Then you're at least across the road from a residential area. If this is truly what the town wants to increase the downtown core, there's many properties in the downtown core that could support this building that, is, that lay vacant. So I'd like to see how Park Bridge could make this a win-win. Step back from their bold, forceful way and see the value in creating a residential neighborhood and saying, look what we've done. We've changed our plans in concert with the neighborhoods we do develop and we're going to locate in a business area or a commercial area. How well that would look for advertising. It's the safety much further. We create it on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram if you go ahead. It's Thank not going to look well. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. You're welcome. It will bode well for you. So I yes, sir. So if we could keep the comments and the questions and the inquiry strictly towards the OPA tonight, please and thank you. That would be greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you very much for receiving me as a, as a guest. I live at 278 Semco Street. Your name, sir? My name is Brian Page, L-E-P-A-G-E. -E. Yes, sir. I'm retired from the city. And uh, primarily what I what I enjoy about Collingwood is the is the scenery. The birds, the trees, the community, it's absolutely excellent. And it's a very attractive and appealing thing. However, when we get down to a community, <clears throat> within that community are many, many school children. Now they come from the north side of uh, the parkway into the south side where there are a number of schools. There are no sidewalks to speak of per se, nor crosswalks. Now when you extend Peel Street to the north side into the proposed development area. Really, 
How are these children to cross? They come home for lunch. There's no stop signs per se. Peel, Rodney, and Simcoe all can shall can convene in one central area like the letter Y. There is one stoplight eastbound on Rodney, straight to eastbound on Simcoe, which has become a local racetrack, and one northbound traffic stoplight or stop sign on Peel. Many people take a quick S turn off of Rodney, skip along Simcoe for about 20 feet, and then they go south on Peel. They don't even bloody stop. Now what happens when these schools are out? We just had a recent accident out there in the park where the other day. Because of speed, no traffic lighting. I go along there at 50, which supports its speed. I have people going past me at 70 and 80. I meet them at the, at the cross stream going down to the dock. So we need traffic control or at least residential traffic studies on the weekends, throughout the week, throughout the school year. And I don't believe has been done adequately, if at all. So accessing uh, northbound off of Peel into the proposed <coughs> opening of south of uh, Peel Street, just north of Simcoe, to me, uh, is something that would be an over course of time but the one-way directional um, designation would be something that would be circumvented by those choosing to take shortcuts and accommodate their own needs as opposed to community safety regulations and safeguards thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much. Anything else, anyone else from the public that wishes to uh, get up and say something before the committee um, chats about it? Welcome, Tim. Hello, uh, Tim Hutchinson, resident of Collingwood on Niagara Street. Um, when you, could you guys bring up your site plan picture again with the L shape? <laughs> I don't know if this is still connected. I can't. So, you guys briefly mentioned about putting privacy on the L side along um, Niagara and Simcoe. Um, I don't know if the people in the apartment buildings there to the west have gotten the letters and everything proposed. I'm curious to what they're going to receive for their privacy with this building. I know your building is set more to the west and very, very closely your border there to that apartment building where it was a beautiful forest to them before, but what, what is going to be, I'd like to know what's going to be done for that side as well. I know you've addressed our side the east and the south, but what about <coughs> all of them? Because I don't, I don't think anybody has come to speak up from that. I don't know if they're getting the letters or whatnot, but I would like to know what's also happening for that side of the, of the proposed area. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to get up and speak? Okay. Seeing none, does the committee have any questions or comments regarding this presentation? Excellent. So I'm sure that our comments or questions will come after the staff report. Okay. So please, uh, they're gonna, uh, we're going to introduce the staff report and then the questions will come from that and you will get another opportunity after that is done to uh, maybe get up and ask questions again. Thank you very much, Mr. Pascuzo, Mr. Voigt, Mr. Higgins, uh, to the gentleman that I don't know. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. And uh, moving on, staff reports. P2018-30, proposed Park Bridge Head Office, 70 Huron Official Plan Amendment. <coughs> Ms. Farrah, would you like to provide an introduction of this uh, staff report, please, and thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. I, I would say that uh, basically, uh, based on the considerable discussion we've already had. I don't know whether there's too much more that I can say at this juncture. Uh, what we are proposing to do is to redesignate the property to downtown core commercial. Uh, the proposal no longer involves any change in the building height. The building height is now the building height that is uh, existing, approved, 
for all of the surrounding properties. Uh, we will be adding a policy that recognizes that this is a um, former landfill site uh, for any further other uses that may ultimately be located on the site. And I guess the, the other change to the official plan has to do with the uh, Schedule C, which is our land use schedule, or sorry, which is our density schedule. And it, this proposal uh, is to take um, the property off of the density schedule because obviously if it is, at the end of the day, redesignated commercial, it does not need to be on our density schedule. So those are the specifics of the um, official plan amendment number 40 that is before you. Uh, I guess what I would say is that we have tried to do a thorough report to review what town staff's view is of this application. Uh, it is town staff's view um, that this is a, there's no question that, that this is um, a application that is obviously um, generated a lot of discussion and concern in the community, uh, but we are interested in having a complete community and a diverse community uh, where there is a mixture of land uses, including uh, residential and employment uses. And we also recognize that this site being located uh, on Highway 26 and in close proximity to uh, the courthouse, which is also designated a downtown core, so it's in close proximity to other downtown core uses. Uh, it is staff's view that this is um, a supportable um, application, and uh, we feel that it is in keeping with the growth plan of the province and also the PPS and uh, we are certainly interested in creating as complete a community as possible. Uh, we also have worked with Park Ridge and we recognize the efforts that they have gone through uh, to investigate other sites uh, around this community that meet their criteria and we appreciate the economic development benefits of this application. And I think I'll leave it there and um, other than that there's obviously been a lot of discussion and uh, we will be prepared to answer other questions. Thank you very much. <coughs> so I'm uh, under the tutelage of the uh, deputy clerk. The recommendation is that the Development and Operation Services Standing Committee support and refer the following staff report to the next regular meeting of council. That's council receive staff report P2018-30 and adopt an official plan amendment to permit the commercial development of the Park Ridge head office. Can I get a mover and seconder for that? Moved by Deputy Mayor Saunderson. Seconded by Councillor Jeffrey. So we're hoping, because we've already had a lot of discussion tonight, that we're going to ask questions. And then if there's any questions that still come from that, I will offer that opportunity at the end, rather than before our questions come out. Um, and if that's OK, do we have any questions or comments from the committee? Deputy Mayor. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Nancy. Nancy, I just want to be sure that we understand uh, the process that we're entering into here. The OPA amendment um, uh, opens the door for this process to go forward, but at the same time, we're still looking at the zoning amendments in the site plan uh, agreement. And uh, so by, by entertaining this idea now, we are not foreclosing changes as we move down this process. Is that correct? That's correct, but what we are doing is we're setting out the policy framework and the policy framework that uh, is proposed is one of this being a commercial property as opposed to a residential property. And the other um, point and the reason for bringing forward the official plan amendment is that the official plan amendment has to get approved by the county and go to the county for approval, whereas the zoning bylaw and the site plan are both local applications that this council can deal with as opposed to um, the official plan which has to go to a higher higher authority. Good, thank you. And so I guess uh, just sticking to the topic then of the commercial use issue, you've told us that uh, the courthouse is there and my understanding that uh, E3 Community Services has its headquarter uh, along Pretty River Parkway. Uh, are there any other uses along there that would be uh, um, blurring this distinction between the commercial and the residential? 
yes, through, uh, through Mr. Chair to the Deputy Mayor. Actually, E3 is not in a commercial designation. Uh, they were a former church, and, and I think they probably were in commercial if I go back and look at the old, uh, the old, old documents that the town had, um, because they were a lawyer's office and they were a church, and now they are the E3 offices. Um, they're not actually designated commercial. I believe they're in a legal non-conforming status, but they've been there for many years at this point uh, as an office building. And I believe, um, I'm, not, I'm not aware of that office building causing any issues with the neighborhood. It's been there for a significant period of time. And you've talked about some of the planning concerns we have here. We do know that Collingwood is a growth node and our population is to increase by about 40% to 33,400 in early 2030. And we also have a target for about 13,500 jobs. Can you, can you just uh, talk a bit about the idea of complete community and what the planning uh, rationale is for that? Well, complete communities, and, 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 and thank you again through Mr. Chair. Um, complete communities are really to offer all of the needs of their citizens uh, to their citizens. For example, uh, whether it's education, employment, varieties of residential, healthcare services, parks. Uh, so we really are to provide all of the different uh, services and functions uh, that the residents of, of the community are interested in um, having and really um, allow them to uh, live a complete life within the community without having to travel to other communities. Uh, there also seems to be, and if you look at some of the more uh, recent um, planning um, papers, I guess I will will put it that way. There seems to be an interest in, in providing more mixed use and and, and more um, integration of some of the uses in some of the planning papers than perhaps there was many years ago. Um, so that's something that seems to be coming up um, more frequently. Uh, but we will be doing our utmost to try and achieve uh, our complete community status and ensure that we maintain that complete community status. And so. Uh with that in mind, I certainly take um, notice of the considerable concerns about safety um, uh, when you start to um, get mixed uses in a residential area. And um, specifically, the left turn lane, this is noted in the report, and this was raised by uh, one of our residents, Ms. O'Connor Black, uh, that the issue with the encroachment onto the environmental protection lands, how would we um, ensure that that left hand, left hand turn lane is attainable? Um, moving forward. I th thank you and, and again the reason or how we will achieve that and I don't believe it's been done yet, I'm, uh, Mr. McDonald might know more than I do, but what we have asked is that they would be required to do an environmental impact statement um, in order to be able to encroach into our environmental protection lands so that if uh, Huron Street is going to be widened and be widened into our EP lands uh, they do need to do uh, the appropriate studies, and the appropriate studies would have to be approved um, by all of the normal agencies. And also on that uh, topic, I note that we, uh, we would require traffic studies and, uh, and uh, some other studies, and the stormwater management would require NDCA approval. And these, at what point in time would all these approvals come into play? Uh, th thank you. Well, there, there again, the, um, we do have studies as far as that we have a, or a traffic opinion and we have a functional servicing and stormwater report. Um, at this point, we looked at them and uh, they imagine that others have looked at them from a high level perspective because we're interested in the, in the general principles at this point because we're talking about an official plan amendment. Uh, when we get to the actual specifics of, of zoning and site plan uh, and site plan, plan in particular, we will need to look at the details and make sure that there are, are sign-offs um, with respect to traffic, stormwater, uh, and, and all other engineering aspects. And I, I'll, I'll let Mr. McDonald say if there's anything else that needs to be said, but I, th I think that would be the way to go ahead. Uh, I think Nancy has summarized it, um, certainly with the future applications, whether it be a site plan or zoning, we would be looking at that um, regardless of what is being proposed here. Okay, thank you very much. Those are my questions. <coughs> Councillor Jeffrey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In addition to the Deputy Mayor's questions, I was just 
In terms of the employment um, impact, I know you referred to about 150 jobs, so my question is through would be how many um, jobs would be coming with existing employees and how many jobs would be creating new jobs for us locally? Chairman, uh, the um, situation actually is, uh, as you heard, we are transferring or, or combining our, our two office uh, um, locations, primarily in um, Wasaga and then also from Calgary. Um, the, the majority will be people moving in, uh, but we've already um, put out postings for new jobs. In fact, there are people that are already now coming um, into and, and joining the firm with uh, as, as new um, employees living in uh, in Collingwood. Uh, and we've also, on the flip side of that, have seen, um, uh, I personally know of at least four or five people that have now bought homes in the community because of where our temporary head office is located. So the short answer is I don't have the exact numbers, um, but of course through attrition and when the move happens, not everyone is going to be coming from Calgary or even from the Wasaga Beach uh, location. And then through just natural attrition, we would expect that, as with any business over time, the majority of them would be from the, the local uh, population. We also need to consider that the fact that there are those well-paying jobs is that there are people that are spending their money you know, while they go out for lunch or on their way uh, um, back home from work as well. So there is that, uh, that kind of spin-off component as well. Thank you. And then through you also, Mr. Chair, um, I was just wondering in terms of uh, turning lane, maybe because I technically don't know how all that works, but is there any reason why the uh, land to achieve that turning lane couldn't come from the Park Ridge thing? Mr. Thol, the existing widening of uh, Huron Street is already on the north side across in front of the courthouse. Um, moving it to the south side would be problematic and have a, a major shift in the road alignment uh, in that short distance. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Cooper. Uh, through the chair, um, first to Nancy, can you help me understand, did I hear that this is um, going to be designated or uses of the downtown core? and Will that come from St. Marie Street on uh, along further to uh, Napier or Simcoe Street? Yes, and through the chair to Mayor Cooper. Uh, this is in a, we're calling it a, a special downtown core designation. <laughs> and the special is that it, the uses are limited to offices only. So we're limiting the uses to offices and those uses that could be accessory to offices. For example, such uses as storage, as has been mentioned. Um, another use that would be accessory to an office use could, for example, be a lunchroom for the employees. That kind of use. So it is, um, that is the proposal as it is currently before Council. And the closest, as, as I believe we've said, the closest um, property that is designated downtown core would be uh, Sobeys in the courthouse. Thank you. And if I can also um, ask, I guess, more to the proponent, and that originally there, um, as I understand it, reading through information, that there was going to be housing available. Um, on the site, on the two floors, or it's all office? Uh, through the Chairman, uh, to Your Worship, um, no, this, uh, this proposal has always been um, just office use. Uh, as uh, the Director of Planning was mentioning, the, it's, uh, it's a, the downtown, but as an exception zone. Uh, the downtown is kind of the parent zone, and then it's been compartmentalized even further into just office. Um, the, the primary changes that we've uh, addressed, given comments we've heard from staff, 
uh, who've been really great in working with us on this, um, as well as uh, the residents, is to um, reduce the height. Uh, that uh, has also been an exercise we've done internally to make sure that we've got the proper space efficiency. So we've essentially reduced the, the footprint size and the height of the building. Thank you, and I appreciate that uh, uh, through the chair. I guess when was it ever contemplated look, looking at some part of it, some component being residential? I mean, uh, no, the, the before it was even came forward as an idea. Uh, no, this uh, um, uh, our search for this this site in Collingwood, and we kind of briefly uh, touched on some of the points there was. Uh, just for, for the office uh, um, location. Uh, of course, that does predispose that we, we do need to get through this, uh, at least various processes to make that, to make that real. I understand, yes, I understand that and I can appreciate it. I'm just trying to uh, um, have a, a good understanding as well. Um, certainly, there is a requirement for a particular size office space, and I know the owner is wishing to have their own property rather than renting. Um, I understand that. So that certainly uh, clarifies that uh, for me uh, as well, appreciating that it would uh, come down to the um, height of similar buildings in, in the area. So that uh, certainly has been addressed. Uh, jobs, uh, that's something that I think we all um, wish to have uh, enhanced jobs and and I, I believe that um, if this can work, that we have a lot of uh, career opportunities for people to move here, but it's the spouse that there is no job availability. So this, I'm just thinking in my head, um, not the planning end of it, but overall that that would perhaps fulfill that, uh, that need. So thank you. Any more questions? Okay, I have uh, a few, and thank you very much for everybody coming out tonight. I have a question to uh, you, Nancy Minutes Fair, on the road allowance. How long has the road allowance been there? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah. Chair, I'm not really sure. It, um, I believe this site was used as a uh, garbage, for lack of a better term, landfill. Um, in the 20s and the 30s. Uh, so after that, Huron Street would have been extended across. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have that information okay. before me, but we're probably 40s, 50s, somewhere in there, and I don't know whether Mr. McDonald knows any more about how long Huron Street has been there. Un unfortunately, I don't. I, I do know that the parkway connection, like the connecting link, Connection for the parkway happened in the early 70s, and uh, presumably that the portion of this right of way was in, in in that time or prior to that. It would be fair to say 40 years. Uh, 40 years or more. Or yes. more. Uh, I, I um, appreciate the clarity that uh, the official plan amendment still has to go to county, Ms. Fair. Not having the answer, that's why I'm asking it. How long may that take? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, depending on how quickly things get to county, they are about to shut down, for lack of a better term, because of uh, um, the upcoming election. So whether it gets to county before uh, January or not, I'm not absolutely sure. I think there's only one possible meeting date where it could get to county before um, the election. The yeah. 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 So um, it would come to committee the whole first yes. meeting, and then the next meeting, which is uh, two weeks later, uh, it would come to uh, county council. Thank you, Mark Cooper. Uh, so going through this and, and hearing the stresses tonight of uh, um, safety. Uh, and in reading the official plan, the provincial policy statement 2014, I will skip through most of it, but key policies contained in this uh, statement, uh, number three, protecting public health and safety. I was, uh, slowing of the traffic could and should be addressed uh, at this juncture, and I was very impressed with 
um, your company uh, saying that they would be happy to look at uh, facilitating a pedestrian walkway to uh, slow down the traffic. Thank you very much for saying that in your presentation. Uh, very impressed with the dark sky lighting because we uh, did that. But that being said, I have no further questions. So, because we went a little bit backwards, for a reason, are there any comments or questions still left unanswered? Please don't go over what we've already been over from the public tonight. If there is anything new that came from um, Ms. Fair and, and, uh, and then our questions as well. Mr. Pretty, sticking to the official plan amendment at 70 Huron. Okay. All right, that was my thought there. And then I actually spoke with the gentleman walking downtown one day. So if the EA is going to be widened, the environmental, or the EP, environmental protective, which is going to be an ongoing issue for years, is it possible, this is through the chair to Director McDonald, the plan or the engineering, or maybe Nancy, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so if we can't have a light at Niagara Street, which I understand that that curve causes problems for everybody to stop all of a sudden, is a pedestrian cross light warranted on that section of road? That would be a good deal. What's the percentage of likelihood of that happening, honestly? Putting that in. If you, if you push back the northern shoreline edge of the EP, straighten out a sidewalk or something from the corner of Niagara, bring it down, is that a likelihood to increase that residential commercial blend? What, what's the percentage of that, of that actually being true? Fantastic question, and I will give uh, the director, if he wishes, a couple weeks to come up with a, oh, come an on. answer, unless you have one right now. I can respond to that. Thank you, sir. Um, this summer, uh, during uh, a peak holiday weekend, we did uh, traffic pedestrian counts at that intersection with the intent of uh, putting a light up. We are challenged in that it's part of the provincial highway and right, any of yeah, the, any of the um, um, traffic signals have to be uh, meet their warrants and meet right. their criteria. Right. Uh, we certainly right. support a traffic light, at, uh, not a traffic light, a pedestrian light at that, that juncture. Yeah. Um, our challenge is, is to make sure it meets the warrants and uh, as uh, Park, Parkview had, had, had said earlier, we're going to work with them in terms of some of their traffic projections in terms of their pedestrians and it may assist us with our uh, traffic counts that we uh, had. Yeah. It, our challenge is meeting the warrants so that we can get the ministry to approve the light. I understand that the Niagara Street location is dangerous because when the parkway whips around, they can't see the potential stopping of that. So therefore, further up, you know, uh, towards the the other commercial property of the shoreline, that that would be a good mixed use. Uh, I understand the residents locally are upset, but employment, drainage, redevelopment, lighting. A crosswalk, which I think honestly, like there's something very wrong about that side of town. These are all good things. I agree, Mr. President. So I thank you I, very much that's for my comments. concern personally. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Any further questions that came from seeing none, I will call for the vote. Oh no. Can I get a move for a second for the staff report? We did. Excellent. Doing it backwards kind of through me. Can I call for the vote? All those in favor? All those opposed? Carried. Thank you very much, everybody. You're more than welcome to stick around for the rest of the evening, um, but I won't be upset if you take the kids to the candy store. <laughs> Moving forward, P2018 P2018-29 Part Lot Control Exemption Bylaw Blue Fairway Phase 2, Cranberry Trail East. Ms. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is the second phase of Blue Fairways, and the proposal is to uh, pass a part lot control bylaw, which would um, allow the lands to be uh, divided into various parcels and uh, sold. 
Uh, these houses have all been built at this point, um, and the, we already have done a zoning bylaw amendment and a site plan agreement to allow this development to take place. So this is really the last uh, stage and something that uh, unfortunately it seems like something that we have to go through on a, a fairly regular basis because it, I gather it's the cleanest and most expeditious way for us to um, handle these developments. There's a, a picture of what the development looks like and there's the area involved. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments from the public before the committee considers the report? Seeing none, the recommendation is that the Development and Operations Services Standing Committee support and refer the following staff report to the next regular meeting of Council. It's council receives staff report P2018-29 and an act and passed a part lot control exemption bylaw to allow for the creation of a common element condominium and 96 associated freehold lots for townhouses within a portion of Block 1 Registry Plan 51M-1093. Can I get a mover and seconder for that? Moved by Councillor Jeffrey. Seconded by Mayor Cooper. Does the committee have any questions or comments regarding Mayor Cooper? No. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, perhaps to Nancy. Uh, overall, Cranberry development has come before us and before my time and maybe even the beginning of your time here in Collingwood, <laughs> which is longer than mine. So I know one time with the, the DCs that yes. um, were according to back in the day, do you know if um, the permit fees, or I guess more to the DCs, are they to today's fees? Do you, Oh yeah, I just had a curious. Through the chair to um, Mayor Cooper. Yes, I do remember way, and I'm sorry, we're talking 70s? Mm -hmm. um, thereabouts, um, maybe early 80s. Um, there was a old plan of subdivision that had the DCs set at, I believe it was $400 a unit back in the day. Well, that's long gone. Okay. Um, these pay the full, shot um, and yes those lands that were covered by that subdivision agreement uh, for, fortunately from our perspective they got built out a long time ago okay thank you very much thank you Mayor Cooper any other questions or comments excellent seeing none uh, I will call for vote all those in favor pass unanimously <clears throat> next P2018-2835, San Fleming Drive, Meditech Engineering Services, Inc. Proposed Site Plan Control Agreement. Ms. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a, a site plan agreement. It's actually an addition to an existing uh, industrial building, um, which we are always pleased to see additions to existing industrial buildings because it means we are adding jobs. To the community um, and the addition is uh, 485 square meters um, to an existing roughly 7,697 square foot building. Uh, it's been through the process. Uh, we really require this agreement just because the current agreement on site is pretty elderly and, and it needed a, a tune-up and so while we were doing an addition we decided we better tune up the old agreement and bring it up to today's standards and there's the proposed building. So if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy, Mr. Chair, to answer them. Any questions or comments from the committee? Seeing none, the recommendation is that the Development Operations Services Standing Committee support and refer the following staff report to the next regular meeting of Council. The Council received staff report 2018-28 in an act and passed an authorization by law to execute the site plan control agreement for the property municipally addressed as 35 Sands from Fleming Drive once the consent of the mortgagee has been obtained. Can I get a move and seconder? Moved by Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Jeffrey. Seeing no. Call for the vote. All those in favor? Passed unanimously. 
Next up, BW 2018-03 Advanced Timing Agreement, Stuart Roten Reservoir. Mr. McDonald. service it and uh, so tonight I'm going to walk through this advanced timing agreement with you um, So I'm going to go through the background, uh, the advanced timing agreement, uh, an existing advanced timing agreement that we'll have to uh, um, uh, get out of and, uh, and our recommendations. So the uh, development charge study was uh, completed in uh, June of 2014 and it outlines uh, growth related uh, capital works. These are works that have our, uh, our responsibility of development. And two projects in particular, the Stewart Road Reservoir Booster Station and the Tenth Line Trunk Water Main, were identified as uh, as development charge projects. Um, the challenge with development charges: uh, the money is collected from building permit at the building permit stage, um, but um, it's needed before. Uh, there are certain works that are needed before the buildings get up and so we have a, a challenge that we're collecting money from builders that um, that need certain works in advance and that's particularly the case here is is the developments along the 10th line in pressure zone 2 require the the, the reservoir and the trunk water main in advance of the uh, of um, us receiving money from the, from the particular developments so uh, this is uh, pressure zone two and the uh, two uh, particular land developments that are part of this agreement are noted on there, Red Maple and Mary Mills. Uh, the booster station is the star and the uh, trunk water main on the tenth line is in red. The project uh, is estimated to be uh, 7.1 million. Uh, of that, uh, 5.7 is development charge uh, and the other is from town. Uh, our current uh, money is available in our development charge reserves as of the end of 2017 is 1.6 million. So as you can see, we're short uh, the funds necessary to proceed with that project. Um, so our options with respect to proceeding is, is to borrow the money, but that's contrary to council's pay-as-you-go policy. And the second option is an advanced timing agreement. In, in this, in an advanced timing agreement, the developers that are contributing to that or participating in the agreement uh, provide their development charges in advance uh, of the building permit in order to uh, support uh, moving forward with a project that they require. In this particular case, uh, the developer is responsible for front ending the DC portion and then the town would uh, would pay the town portion and we have sufficient funds and they were part of our budget um, and to, for, for proceeding for, forward. Um, the components of the development charges components are made up of credits to the participating developers but they aren't enough and we would um, require town-wide contributions. And so in, the, in this particular agreement, um, the credits amount to about $1.8 million and the, uh, the balance would come from, um, DC, uh, from the town-wide DCs and payments would be made on an annual basis and they're based on 50% of the amounts received from, uh, from the town-wide water DCs. 
Initially, there were three proponents to this agreement, Mare Mills, Red Maple, and Lynxview. Lynxview is under new ownership, and they're not proceeding at this time. So we have finalized the agreement with Mare Mills Villages and Red Maple. The agreement allows for other benefiting developers to come in at a later date, and they would then make their proportional contributions to the agreement. The details of the agreement, the agreement is 100% secured by the developers. The town will do the construction work. The term is until the developers are repaid. Reimbursement costs are based on the water DC component. Credits for water portion DC are applicable to the developers at building permit stage. And the annual payments from the town equal to 50% of the water DCs. There is provision in there if by chance we have another project and we have insufficient funds for another project, we can defer those payments in that particular year. The second component of our report is we do have an existing advanced timing agreement with Mare Mills Estates. Mare Mills Estates is next to Mare Mills Village, and that agreement included clauses to other benefiting developments, and Mare Mills Villages would be a benefiting development for them to contribute to their agreement. However, we have sufficient funds in our development charge reserves that we feel that they should be paid off so that we can move forward with this other agreement clean. We don't have complicated formulas of so many lots are contributing to this agreement and so many to that agreement. It makes for a clean agreement moving forward, and there are provisions in the Mare Mills Village front-ending agreement for us to do that. So the second part of our recommendation is that we pay that outstanding agreement that's from 2005. There was another question that came up since submitting the report, and that's a question with respect to debt. I had a conversation with the Treasury Department, and advanced timing agreements are not considered part of tax-based debt because they are strictly development charges. Their payments are made from the developers. In this particular case, the parties to the agreement are reimbursed through development charges, not through taxes. The town and the developers have the authority to enter into an agreement providing contributions towards the agreement as credits under Section 38 of the Development Charge Act. The agreements do not form debt to the taxpayers. They're borne by the developer, and all the risk is the developer to receive the money. There's no guarantee that they'll get their money back. They get their money back through their own credits as well as contributions from the town-wide DCs. We anticipate the current balance in our water reserves is $4 million, and the water reserves, I just got this information from the Treasury, we're now up to $2.6 million in our water reserves. So we're comfortable that our water reserves are in place for other projects as they need it, and we don't foresee a large project in the next couple of years. Excellent. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the public before the committee considers the report? Seeing none, the recommendation is that the Development Operations Services Standing Committee support and refer the following staff report to the next regular meeting of Council. The Council receives staff report PW 2018-03 and authorize the Mayor and the Clerk to execute the Advanced Timing Agreement Stewart Road Reservoir by passing the attached authorizing bylaw subject to staff receiving the necessary securities, fees, and insurance 
and that council authorized the treasurer to close out the advanced timing agreement with Mayor Mills Development 1355046 Ontario Inc. and 2005002 Ontario Inc. with the final payment through existing water development charges reserves. Can I get a mover and seconder? Moved by Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Jeffrey. Does anyone from the committee have any comments regarding Deputy Mayor? Yes, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, to Brian. Brian, I just want to confirm I've got this right. So, right now, to get the development um, for Mayor Mills and Red Maple going, they need to get the water services in there so they can start work. So, that's a good thing. And uh, the only way to do that, based on our current financial situation, is either to incur debt, which breaches our pay as you go scenario, or to enter into this advanced timing agreement where it's front ended by the developers and they get development fee credits down the road when they come time to getting their building permits and those are non-refundable so if they never move forward with their building permits uh, the development fees um, sit on the books and they don't get any money back they're they're taking all the risk on this and by doing this we're enabling them to move forward now as opposed to having to push this down the road or incur debt that's correct okay that's that's good thank you i'm full support of this Mayor Cooper. Uh, thank you uh, chair uh, we ha I think this answers the questions that we've received in uh, all of council in an um, email concern about um, increasing our debt when um, the policy that is in place by this council um, goes in a different direction and, and uh, not in favor of that. So that was explained, I think, very well, Brian. Thank you very much for that and to move ahead on it. We um, And just saying that you don't see any other large uh, projects coming forward at this time. So when I come by the roundabout at Poplar and High Street to the northwest, um, the development there, so it's already um, supported. There's no, there won't be an ask there then of increase. There, there's uh, there's water already in place for there. There's a small connection between uh, um, the uh, development access back to Campbell, and but that's included in our development charges, and we'll do that in conjunction with their sewer project. Uh, it's not significant. Uh, they have uh, their water pressure through the uh, Poplar Side Road reservoir that was done in 2008. So um, all. DC credits that will all DC funds that we receive from that development will go into the reserves, and so um, uh, it will help go towards payment of other water DC projects that we have uh, have planned. And it's part of our ten-year capital program that we looked at our DC funds, and we see no uh, uh, areas of caution within our ten-year plan. Thank you very much. Seeing no other questions or comments, I will call for the vote. All those in favor, pass unanimously. Reports and minutes of other committees or boards. The, it is that the Development Operation Services Standing Committee receive and refer the following committee minutes to Council. Collingwood Heritage Committee minutes June 20th and July 18th, 2018. As I see no members from the Heritage Committee in the audience, so we know we're here to give an update. Um, is there any questions from public. Michael, thank you. Any questions or comments? Uh, the recommendation is that the Development Operations Services Standing Committee receive and refer the following committee minutes to Council calling the Heritage Committee minutes July 20th, June 20th, I apologize, and July 18th. Can I get a mover and seconder? Moved by Councillor Jeffrey. Second, seconded by Deputy Mayor Saunderson. Uh, any comments or questions for the Standing Committee? Mayor Cooper. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, just uh, compliments to the Heritage Committee on how um, with due diligence they are with uh, buildings in the Heritage District so appreciate that uh, most certainly and I see it a number of over a period of time in particular I'll just speak to the two here there are a number of um, property business owners property owners I guess they would be probably more that have been back and forth to the committee. And there's a reference in the public delegation 
um, regarding, and, and maybe there needs to be a better communication. I've seen um, Heritage at the farmer's market as I have other departments. However, looking at um, pressure treating materials uh, in the Heritage District and um, that perhaps there needs to be um, better communi communication, enhanced communication for those um, property owners to be aware of that education, better education for, for them. Um, so I'm going forward. Any other comments or questions regarding Councillor Jeffrey? Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through to Nancy, I was just wondering about the status of, I think Council had approved $10,000 for um, the committee to investigate the potential of expanding the Heritage District. And I'm just wondering in terms of, I know that some things have changed or there was a couple of meetings, but I'm just wondering what the status of that is. Uh, th thank you, uh, through the chair, to um, Councillor Jeffrey. Uh, I guess where we, we are is, is when speaking with Marjorie, we really can't proceed with that project until the end of the year because I think, don't think we would have enough money until um, actually 2019. I gather the way the money goes into the accounts. Um, the other uh, issue is, um, to be clear, the, it seems like there's um, a great deal of work that is required as far as looking after our current heritage district and um, to increase the size of the heritage district uh, would require even more staff time and more work and uh, at the moment um, because the person who looks after the heritage district from a staff perspective is on maternity leave um, it, it, just, it has not been advancing as well as it should and I'm the first to admit that I have not been looking after the Heritage District probably as well as I should and therefore uh, it really is, is going to be off for this year. Okay, thank you. I, I was just wondering because um, I've had some questions and I, I didn't know how to answer it myself because I hadn't heard about the status of that. And I think originally we were going to try to um, a budget for a certain amount annually to get it up to the amount that would cover a uh, proper uh, investigation. Yes. So it wasn't that we were necessarily going to actually expand it. We were going to speak to people within the area and get a, an idea of what the potential was for it. Is that correct? Ms. Rare? Um, yes, through the chair. It's my understanding we, were, we started by having a couple of public meetings about which area would uh, be a potential expansion. So it is my understanding we were actually thinking about having a second district or expanding it into another area. Um, but uh, certainly I'm, I'm happy to, I, I don't pretend to have all of the information, so I'll, I'll see if I can uh, find out something more and get back to Councillor Jeffrey. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Nope. Seeing none, I will call for the vote to receive and refer the minutes as noted to the next meeting of Council. All those in favor? Departmental updates. Does uh, the staff have any departmental updates uh, for the standing committee? Seeing none. Under planning, <coughs> public delegations. Seeing none. Other business. Seeing none. Adjournment. Moved by Councilor Jeffrey. <laughs> All those in favor. <laughs> <laughs>